Ladies and gentlemen, the stable version of Android 16 is now live and rolling out to Pixel devices. In this video, I'm going to quickly give you the rundown of the big new things in Android 16, but that's not the only thing that's happening because they've also announced a Pixel feature drop with several more things to talk about. Lots of new things. Let's get into it. All right, so Android 16 is installed on my Pixel 9 Pro Fold, as you can see there from the Easter egg. And the first feature that we're going to talk about is something called Live Updates. But strangely enough, the best place for me to show you what this feature is going to be like is actually on my Galaxy S25 Ultra, because Samsung kind of already did this with the Now Bar. Basically, what you're going to be getting is this little pill that will appear in your task bar, or in your status bar, I should say, up at the top left, and it's going to show ongoing activities. Now, unfortunately, Google says these live updates are starting with compatible ride share and food delivery apps. So if you're hoping to see this working with YouTube Music or that clock application like I just showed you on my Samsung device, that is not there quite yet. This is going to take some time to slowly roll out, very much in typical Google style. You should also be seeing more of what's called predictive back animations, and I can show you this here. As I start my back swipe, you'll see that things kind of zoom out and give you a little peek, a little preview of what you're about to be going back to. Now, obviously, once you go back far enough where there's nowhere to go back to, it's going to start to zoom the app out and kind of tell you, hey, you're about to close this app and go fully home. So hopefully less often now you'll swipe back and be surprised that you went home. Much like support for these predictive back animations, Google is also making a couple of other changes mandatory for apps targeting Android 16, the first of which viewers of my channel, I think, are going to be very happy to see and very familiar with. Do you remember when the original Pixel Fold launched and many, many applications just existed with pillar boxes on either side? They did not stretch to fill out the entire screen because that application had hard-coded into it restrictions to its actual size. It could not be expanded and perhaps it couldn't be rotated either. Instagram. Well, that is going away. Apps targeting Android 16 cannot force a certain orientation and they cannot force a certain size. They have to be able to resize, reflow, and to rotate. And I think that's going to be very beneficial for large screen devices going forward. OEMs don't have to kind of make their own way to force that. The apps themselves won't be able to anymore. The same sort of thing is happening with what Google calls edge to edge. I'm sure you've seen many times applications that don't fully take up the screen of your device. That space down at the bottom where the little swipe bar is just kind of is blank and the application doesn't go behind it like it should, that is also being mandated. The apps have to expand to take up the entire screen of the device. There's nothing worse than a cluttered notification shade Prior to Android 16, app developers could actually tell you if they wanted their notifications to be bundled or always to be separate. Now with Android 16, they're going to be bundled. If you have one app spamming you, they're not going to be all separate. They're going to be put together into this one notification that can be expanded or collapsed. Google is also launching this new one-stop shop for securing your device called Device Protection. And the features here are quite numerous. Device theft, apps, network, web. Basically, this thing is supposed to fully secure your device. Simple things like if it detects motion that indicates someone has snatched your phone, it's going to lock itself. It's scanning for unsafe apps and malware. It's blocking installation of apps from unknown sources. A big reason I'm probably going to leave it turned off because I do that quite a bit. But you can go through these and see all of the ways that this is meant to be protecting your device, protecting you from scams and threats. Inside your battery section, you now have a battery health department. You can see that my Pixel 9 Pro Fold is still at 100% capacity. Great to see. So now, just like iPhone users, we can watch that percentage slowly tick down and our anxiety slowly increase. Here's a cool one for people who might be attaching a wireless keyboard to their Android device. You might not realize that you have a whole bunch of different little shortcut keys, which are actually really, really quite cool and very useful if this is how you use your device. But now, 
These keys are customizable. Maybe this shortcut key to use split screen on the right or left isn't what you want it to be. You can change it now. Which, by the way, if you've not tried this, look how ridiculously well that actually works. It slides that application out of the way, select another app, and boom, there you are in split screen. For the Pixel feature drop, we're starting with a new feature called Pixel VIPs. This is kind of an interesting one. So it says that it's available only on Pixel devices, and it's a new widget that's from the Contacts app, and it helps you stay connected to your favorite people, so the very important people in your life. What you're going to do is you're going to make sure that their contact info is all filled in, birthdays, emails, addresses, and preferences, and from there, it's going to give you all kinds of information. As you can see in this image, people can even share their real-time location with you. Lots of potentially interesting things here. You guys know that I've been a big fan of Pixel Studio, really, since I got my hands on it quickly, making silly little images that I can send to friends in place of an emoji. Well, I think Google understood the exact same use of it because they are now using Pixel Studio built right into Gboard to do exactly that, to make custom, fully custom little emojis and images to send to your friends. So no longer do you have to even switch apps to do this. It's gonna happen right there in Gboard. Google is also expanding a couple of older features like Satellite SOS is now going to be available in Australia. The Recorder app that can do AI generated summaries is gonna now work in French and German. And the Clear Voice feature in the Recorder app is now coming to Pixel 8 phones as well. It looks like they're also adding what they're calling an education hub inside the camera application. You can click a little question mark and it's going to give you an explanation of what that camera mode is actually going to do. They are enhancing some accessibility features. You can now use live search inside the magnifier application. They're also adding the ability to use LE audio features with hearing aids on Pixel 9 and newer devices running Android 16. This makes it easy for you to take calls on the go and access your hearing aid presets as well as change your ambient volume through your Pixel phone settings. Get more details from Expressive Captions. They teased this a while back, but basically, instead of just regular captions, they're going to be trying to make these captions more expressive. As you can see in this image where this person is yelling, he shoots, here we go. They're putting it in caps and repeating letters to really let you know that this is an excited moment. And soon they're going to be giving us a new AI powered editing feature inside Google Photos. It says soon editing in Google Photos will put more power at your fingertips so you can fine tune your pics in just a few steps. You'll get AI powered suggestions that enhance your photos with just a single tap plus instant access to recommended tools based on what you select to edit and easier access to your favorite tools for complete controls. Now, of course, there are two really big elephants in the room that I think has been really confusing for people, and I know I'm going to get asked about. Number one, where is Material 3 Expressive, this beautiful new UI redesign? That is going to be part of the QPR1 release. That's why it's there in QPR1 Beta 1, and now, of course, Beta number 2. And the same thing goes for the desktop mode. We're going to be talking about that again here very, very soon. Maybe as soon as tomorrow. I don't know when you're watching this, so that doesn't mean anything. But it's going to be shortly after this video is published. That is also likely to be launched with QPR number 1. So it's not part of Android 16. It's part of the first quarterly platform release after Android 16. That being said, those are the big new changes in Android 16, as well as this Pixel feature drop for the month of June. There are also quite a few things that have changed under the hood, more things that developers are going to care about, and just more smaller things. But again, those are the big ones. If you see anything that I should have included, drop a comment in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content like this, and until next time, Stay nerdy, my friends.